Hey guys, today we are going to talk about some more cards. I did get two shipments out of my five shipments from during Hurricane Harvey. I did not realize how bad it would be, so I spent the first night ordering magic cards, which in hindsight is not very smart because your cards are delayed like crazy. So the entire night I just was online buying stuff. I'm not sure why but I had the day I typically don't get many days off work but the day the next day I had off work and I felt like huh it's time to speculate on some magic cards so I got two packages the same card I would do a video I like them a lot but on to the eight cards that have gone up in price today I have a ton of these you have a ton of these. If you play during Future Sight, this was not considered a valuable card. In fact, it was considered a card that you couldn't give away. You just couldn't even give away this card. And now, because of the Cat Tribal deck, it's very good. It puts tokens. So there is that. Now, Unlimited. Unlimited Edition, especially cards unique to Unlimited like Blaze of Glory, Lich, all of these cards are spiking like crazy, and there are a few that have not yet, but they will. So the pattern is very easy. So Alpha and Beta, they spiked. Arabian Nights, Legends. Even the Dark. The Dark is a terrible set. That has been spiking. Of course, Unlimited is going to spike. I mean, Unlimited has the... So we Revise was the big set. So imagine Revise is the RTR where they just print way too much of it and it's still like 80 bucks a box. That's what Revise was back in the day. They printed a bazillion boxes of Revise. I remember going to my local grocery store, the Acme, and they had, this was a grocery store, they had boxes and boxes of this stuff. And they didn't have very much of anything else. They never had, um, they had a few packs of beta and alpha and unlimited. I don't know who was running the grocery store, but they knew their price is pretty good. Anyway, I wanted to talk about Onslaught. Onslaught has a lot of wizards. Well, there's two ways you can look at this, right? You can look at it as, huh, let me buy the wizards and hope they go up in price. Or you can look at it as, let me buy the boxes and boost the packs the wizards are in. And then some person who wants to gamble will open these packs and not find what they want but hey that doesn't affect me so onslaught was a it was kind of a wizard tribal it was probably the most wizards i've seen and there's some good uncommon ones during this block that's where they all kind of existed and now they don't really exist that much anymore you know what's a really good wizard but it's not like Urtai, Urtai the Corrupted has a alternative art. Not sure what the price is, but even when I was a child, I knew this was like, this was crazy, right? Alternative art card. That was like the first mythic. Whereas the Urtai, and then they had Tagamoth, and they had all these like legendary Skyship had in one. I have still never really seen the Skyship version of it. I've seen the other ones. But that might be interesting because they are incredibly unique. And I, I just don't see them every day. All right. Back on to the Legends. Any Legends. I mean, this is not going to be reprinted for obvious reasons. It's actually... I know some of you will be triggered, but I find this offensive. So the story behind this, correct me if I'm wrong, is a person who wrote, who drew the artwork was actually a KKK member or something like that. And this has a very unique name. It's a very unique piece of artwork. I just don't see Magic the Gathering ever wanting to reprint this card, even if they could, right? So yeah, triple quadruple blue is very blue. It's a blue card, which is surprising, but nonetheless. Uh, dancing Skimitar. What have I told you? For four mana, you could have a one five flyer that is subject to artifact removal. How much would you pay for this? Thirteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
every single thing in Arabian Nights is like, Phew. it's just like, there's nothing, I mean, there are cards left that haven't spiked, they will eventually spike. I'm not sure who's buying these stuff, I'm not sure who's, who's able to sell it. What I do know is, if you're fortunate enough to have a lot of this in bulk, just don't trade it away, keep it, keep it, keep it. I am very fortunate because I have these, because no one would want, the interesting part is no one wanted them. Like it was more labor to put them in my home than I thought they were worth. And then magically they all spike up to like $15. I'm like, wait a second, what's going on here? Wait, you mean these Arabian Nights cards are actually like more than like five cents? Previously, like if you told me in 2000, when I was playing Magic in let's say college freshman year at NYU, 2005, yes. In 2005, we were in the Descensions, the Ravnica block, so it's a very good time for Magic. But if you had told me that somehow this, these cards would, like Elephant Grave at that time wasn't that pricey, and now it is $200. If you told me Elephant Grave would be a $200 card in 2005, if you went back in time and tell me that, and I should buy as many, I would be like, no, you're an idiot. I'm going to buy this Ravnica stuff, because Ravnica stuff is going to blow up. And I was not the only one. Um, I was absolutely not the only one who felt that way. And a lot of people trade, tried to trade for my Dragon Whelp. Um, and the more beta is more valuable, the more people want that card because what is, what is this card worth? It's worth a ton of money right now. And it's very classic. But no, no way I would have imagined Elephant Graveyard would have been worth any more than like five bucks or 10 bucks, right? This is kind of like a met card. Next, we are going to look at another surprising card, Jihad. Again, even if they could reprint this, I'm not sure they would. And it's over $100 now. Okay, triple white, choose a color. As long as opponent has cards of that color in play, all white creatures gain plus two, plus one. Jihad must be discarded immediately if any time opponents have no cards of that color in play. So... I remember Glorious Anthem, and that was like better, and it affected all creatures. And I always wanted something that affected all creatures, not just white creatures. Uh, Crusade is double white, and it gives plus one, plus one to all white creatures, but it doesn't have that ability where you have to pick. Here's the problem with playing this card, and I have played this card. I actually may own it. If I own it, it's in a random deck in bulk somewhere they would just kill their creatures off, right? You're, by definition, going aggro, and then they would just kill all your creatures, and then it's a dead card. It's gone. It's just dead. Unless they had the wall, which would actually benefit you. <laughs> I remember. I remember the deck I had when I was a kid. It was the most annoying deck. It was like wall of swords, glacial wall. It was like just a wall deck. But, you know, I think magic is very... Um, I miss that about magic, just being younger and having, you know, having just crazy deck ideas, right? Angel decks and wall decks and Phyrexian processor decks. A lot of you don't even know what that means, but it means that like, hey, uh, it was something that you sacrificed X amount of life and then you would combine it with not Glorious Anthem, but the other one where whenever a creature comes to play, you gain life equals power toughness, one of the two. And you would just create this giant token and you would gain this humongous amount of life and get all these tokens. But you had to survive that turn because Processor made you sacrifice X amount of life. So the, the question was, how much life do you sacrifice? The more life you sacrifice, the more likely you're going to win the game long term. But you're at, you are suspect to being blown out that one turn that you sacrifice your life. So I remember that deck fondly. Oh, 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 and promos, right? So here's the interesting thing. The comic book promos have all been going up. If you don't believe me, check up how much a Duraz comic book promo is. It's like 20 plus dollars. Like, it's insane. A comic book was only $4. So, like, let's assume the comic book you value at, like, well, I guess $4. But let's assume the comic book you value at a dollar. Well, paying $3 for a $20, $25 card, not a bad deal. And I know those comic books did not sell because my local game store is a comic book store. 
and they always had them. They always had them in stacks, no matter what they were. They just had multiple copies because people, it's kind of like the Funko line. It just didn't work. It just didn't work no matter how hard they tried. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.